hey, hey, hey. Uh, I've got to work out whether I am upside down and in the right group. Let's just see on here. Um, 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 um. I look like I'm the right way around. So the last time, so I'm having to do it on my phone and the last time I did a live on my phone, I was upside down for the whole thing, which was very exciting. But I'm in the right group, I can see it. Hey, hey, hey to everybody, how you all doing? Everybody okay? Um, I hope you all had a lovely Valentine's yesterday. Um, hi Pam, hi Michelle. And for those of you who were on your own for Valentine's Day, I hope you had a lovely day with yourself because who better to love than your own self? So I hope you had a lovely day. Uh, hi, Joanne. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, 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 Karen. Hi, Sarah. Um, gosh, there's lots of you here. Hi, Georgie. Um, I love it when you all join. Hi, Colette. Hi, Leslie. So I have got the great finger covers on, uh, which is all very exciting. If you see me looking that way, it's because my computer is behind me so I can see the comments just behind me. So uh, apologize if I'm not looking directly at you. Um, USB, my favorites. I love the USBs. Um, hi, Judy. Well on the road to recovery. I'm just a walking re uh, disaster. How's Nick? Nick's trying to avoid me, I think. I don't blame him. Uh, just crafting around. Hello, Will Will. Hello, lovely. Uh, hi, Suzanne. Oh, I love it when you all join. It gets me very excited. Uh, so, right. One of the things that we have um, is a thing called, uh, actually, I can't remember the name of it, OBS, I think it's called, which is a software that we use, which allows me to switch between different cameras. And it's what you'll see Hannah using. She uses a different version of it, but it's the same thing. So it allows us to do all this fancy technology stuff but mine won't link to Facebook, so I can't do it. So I'm just gonna have to move my phone around and you're gonna have to tell me if it's right. What I did do, hey up from the warehouse. Hello, lovely people. Uh, hi, Sue. Um, never used a USB, so I'm gonna watch and see what you can do. Loads, it, it's, I'll go through it all. Um, but just to let you know, I've got to sort of move my camera. Now what I've done is flipped it. So at the minute I'm backwards to me so the cupboard that you can there the cupboard that you can see there is actually on that side of me so i'm thinking it should be the right way around for any um things but if not we'll work it out um okay so what's the difference between a usb who are the boys behind you that's my babies so uh that's arthur and abraham my two boys who i love very much um so the difference between dies and a USB, we don't get a lot of time to kind of explain this to you on the shows. And it's really difficult because if you've never used a die cut, uh, uh, sorry, a, an SVG cutting machine, and I was really, really reticent to do it. I didn't want to do it. The fox has gone, he went to his new home. He did, he's, he's I've just had a photo actually yesterday of him up in his new house. Um, so yeah, USBs. There's a lot more scope on a USB than there ever is on dies. Now, I'm a huge die fan, so I would never say that one is better than the other. Hello, Mark Judd. That's my boss. That's always a warning that I've got to be on my best behaviour. Uh, I rang him this morning and just spewed words at him. Ah, there's Auntie Hannah. Rue and I are watching. Hello, gorgeous. Uh, yeah, so... Um, I don't have a preference particularly between USBs and dies in the same way. So I do a lot of sculpting and I was talking about this the other day to somebody. The difference between carving in wood and carving in clay are completely different. So I could take the same image and I could carve, a, you know, I could carve a bird in wood or I could carve a bird in clay. They're two completely different mediums and I would have a different result. They wouldn't look the same at the end because they are completely different. And that's the same as using dies or using an SVG on a cutting machine. Now, I, this is, so I'm not on Create and Craft right now. I'm just talking to you, me and you, as we are here. I have used every single cutting machine that there is out there. I've owned them all and honestly, I really hated cutting machines. 
until I got the Brother Scan and Cut and I love it. Now I'm not saying the Brother Scan and Cut is the best cutting machine out there. I'm not on television. I've got nothing to prove at this point. What I'll say to you is for me, it's the easiest. Uh, it scans what I need to scan so I can see where I'm going with it. I can feel my way around it. I know where all the buttons are and it tells me when I'm going wrong. Now, it, the, other, uh, the other machines that I've had, they never told me when I was going wrong and I got frustrated. I don't have time to fight with a machine. I don't. I have time to fight with my children when they're driving me insane. Um, I, you know, those things, they're where we want to devote our time. I have time to fight with a card when I'm trying to put it together. I don't wanna fight with a machine. So the scan and cut was a revelation to me because I was able to just really quickly find my way around it. That's just my personal preference. There are other ones out there and the USB will work with the other ones too. I'm just explaining my preference. So I am going to show you what on the scan and cut. It's the one I've got. I can't tell you how it will work with the others. I don't know. I don't own them and I'm not going to pretend to know. So uh, I can only show you it for this. So I hope that makes sense. I just want to be clear about that from the beginning. Um, scan and cut is brilliant. Yeah, I think until you've owned one, it's really hard to see how amazing they are. Gorgeous boys. They're cheeky boys. They're very, very naughty. They're very funny, actually, but very... So uh, I got a, a text message, I'll tell you very quickly, because it made me laugh an awful lot. And I was on with Auntie Hannah when it happened, which was very, very funny this morning. So my youngest, Abraham, apparently, he's in Yorkshire at the minute, but he had uh, said that he was feeling very unwell, <laughs> that he had a sore throat and that he wasn't he wasn't feeling great. So, um, but Abraham likes to not go to school. So we're kind of wise to this. So we sent him off packing to school or Matt did. And um, Matt messaged me and said, you know, I'll wait for the phone call. Anyway, I got the phone call from school saying, can, can you come and pick Abraham up? He's not very well. So I rang Matt and said to him, you need to go and get him. Matt went and got him from school. And I was on the phone with Auntie Hannah and a message came up from Matt saying, I think the placenta in the jar was the tipping point for Abraham. So apparently he threw up in class when a placenta was put in front of him. He's a boy after my own heart. Right, the scan and cut. Okay, the first thing I want to show you, which is really, really, the reason I was going to do this originally is the Crafty Little Things card shape. And I've cut it already because it's too complex to cut on here. I, I keep using that word and it's the wrong word. It's not complex at all. Uh, it's time consuming. So it takes three minutes just to cut this piece. And there's, you need to cut it twice. Then you need to do all the other bits for it. So I was never going to do it live. And I'm not going to do it live today here either because it's just time consuming. The great thing about this is, uh, which is different to the die. It is different to the Crafty Little Things die if you have it. For those of you who remember the Crafty Little Things die well, it, this is a wardrobe. This piece is a wardrobe. The Crafty Little Things die only has got one drawer space. Can you remember the drawers on the Crafty Little Thing wardrobe? This has got two, which I think is ace because it gives us more scope. What you get is a score line here and then you get two in the center there. Can you see? So you've got them there and it becomes a wardrobe shape. We cut it twice and I've got red liner tape on that one. And they go at opposing sides. So you've got two of the drawers at the bottom here and two at the top. And you sit that one on top. So that becomes the front of your wardrobe. And that is the back. She says haphazardly doing this. I can't get the cameras to turn so on my computer. So I'm having to be haphazard but maybe we'll come back and do a full card, but I wanna show you around a bit and show you some Elevate. But it sits like this, and then you have some drawers, which you get on the scan and cut, and I think I managed to forage and find the right bag of little cuts that I've got. I'm just gonna show you briefly, I won't go into the whole thing, um, but it's just so you know what it looks like. So you're putting those two center panels together, so that one sits on top of the other. Can you see? Like so. But the drawers, where it goes in the back, you've got these two flaps here. And what we do is we glue the drawer 
you see we've got the drawer here printed isn't it pretty they're really lovely shabby chic drawers but you glue it and it slots let me show you properly hold on so that goes through the slot the drawer can you see there and on this one it sort of gets glued on to that piece onto that flap now what happens is when the card opens and shuts that drawer opens and pulls it's a mechanism so you can put things into those drawers which is super super cute um right that is that thing i'll probably do like a full demo but i'll do it in the group now there's loads and loads of comments and my computer's not showing me the older ones when you scan something in and you finish with a scan can you delete the scan without having to switch off your machine yes we'll go through that will this be on cc yes yes it'll be on the cc facebook page um i've only come to craft and using this scan and cut and it took me some time but i love it it's a great machine most of us on here have wounds and would throw up at that too <laughs> poor abraham he wasn't happy i gotta tell you uh let me just look and see if i can find any more comments on here no i don't think it's gonna play um anyway right so that's that. Now we've had a lot of questions regarding things like welding and that sort of thing. What I want to do today more than anything is sort of get to where you guys feel comfortable. So we're going to go from beginning to end. It might be a longer than normal um, live. Dip in and out as you please and, and we'll go through it. But the other thing, I have harangued uh, Carnation quite a lot. Obviously, they don't get sick of me demanding things. Um, and I wanted an offer on Elevate because Elevate's amazing stuff and it never gets put onto any kind of sale. And it's such a good tool to have. Now, when it comes to crafting, I'll be the first to admit that it's not the pretty things that entice me, it's the tools. It's the things that I can use, like your scan and cut, like your elevate. It's the things that I can use to make my crafting better. We can buy pretty things any time of the day and you can get them sort of very cheap in various places. But to me, when we find something like elevate, is that the right way around on your screen? My computer behind is lagging, so I can't, I can just see myself wittering. Um, if that's the right way around or the wrong, that looks the right way around. That means my camera should be the right way around. So Elevate is, it's like a sticker, a foam sticker, but it's ace. It smells so good. Honestly, I get into so much trouble. <laughs> it really smells nice. Wendy, is the USB in stock? Yes, it will be. What are the black finger protectors for, Carla? Mandy, I have got essentially dead man's fingers. I've got an infection in every single fingernail. I lost half a thumbnail yesterday, so they're starting to come off um, and they have all gone black and they look horrific and nobody wants to see it. Put you off your lunch. When we get Elevate, it comes in two sizes. So we have got the, um, the two millimeter and the one and a half millimeter. I didn't know that it cut on the scan and cut. Um, so that was like a revelation to me. And the only reason I found out is because the boss at Carnation, Mark, had said to me, use Elevate when you do the USB. And I was like, no, because it's going to blunt my blade. I'm not interested in that. And he was like, it doesn't. No, it's fine. Um, so I made a pact with him that if he damaged my blade by me putting Elevate into my machine, uh, that he would have to buy me a bottle of vodka. And he agreed, so I knew that it wasn't going to ruin my... Because he was he's never going to part with his money to buy me a bottle of vodka, ever. So I knew that he what he was saying was correct. It doesn't mess with your blade at all. It's absolutely fine. So we're going to have a look at Elevate today, because it is my favourite thing. And um, it's really difficult to get. So Carnation managed to get, like, a load of it stocked in. And um, it's... When I say a load, I don't know how long that will last. That's the problem, and I don't know when we're going to get it back. Um, does it cut on the CM300? Do you know what? I'm going to be totally honest with you, Eileen, and say I don't know. Um, and the only reason I don't know is because I've actually never owned a 300. So I have the CM900, the SDX900, and the SDX1200. I'll be using the 1200 today because it's the one I've got here. My other ones are, are at home. Um... Who just put that they've bought Elevate? Amja, I bought Elevate when it came out, but never used it yet. You 
You've got to get it out, girl. It's like the best thing ever. Like, it, it's just really good fun. You can make stickers. Who doesn't like making stickers? So we're going to play with Elevate today. One of the things that has been asked, I think it was Jo, wants to know how to make this, essentially. Like, how do we get that? So you can see that this is a card shape. So when I open it, you can see that it is an actual card shape. So if I do it that way, you can see it better. It's Janine's, thank you, Janine. Um, and that's welding on the machine. And actually they've been resized as well. So let's go through things from the very beginning. Let's, I'm not gonna actually cut stuff out particularly today because um, it's just time consuming, but I'm gonna show you all the steps to get there so you know how to do it. So I'm just going to choose, I've got all the um, vignettes, not all of them because I use some of them on the shows, but I've got some of the vignettes here. When we talk about resizing, what we're talking about is that is the normal size of that vignette. And then I resized it on my printer and that is the size of it large. So you can see there's a huge difference there. The way we do that is on your printer. So... When you open up the PDF document and you go to print, um, you've got to, you don't like the smell. <gasps> Colette, uh, I love the smell. Um, when you use it on the, um, it was like a brain, brain, brain printer, PDF. Whoo, the squirrels came. Um, go to print and it'll have a box and usually you, we tell you to print an actual size or at, um, some of them do it at 100%. It depends on your printer. Mine likes actual size. But for some of you, you'll print at actual size and it won't fit your dies. So then it means you need to do it at 100%. So just play with those settings. But if you do it to custom scale and you resized it to 150 and then printed it, you're going to get the big vignette. When you get the big, big vignette, you can then increase the size on your scanning cut as well. So we can play with those things. Um, what size did you go up to please, Carla? It would be Janine that did it. I'm guessing Janine did a 200. Yeah, I'm gonna say that Janine did a 200 because this one that I've got printed here is 150 and Janine's is bigger, hey, oh, there. So I'm guessing she's done that at 200%. Uh, if Janine watches, I'm sure she'll come in and help with that. When can I order the USB? The USB is actually already up for sale. I did a, um, a preview of all the boards actually on the page. Uh, was it maybe last week? So if you go to the Carnation Crafts page, they'll do it. If anybody's watching and you can, from Carnation, and you can put a link in the comments, that would be awesome. Uh, and then people know where to go for the USB. Sorry, my brain didn't think it up. Uh, if I blow it up on the printer as 200%, is that the same on the scan and cut? Michelle, it absolutely is. So we'll go through all of that. I'll show you how to resize. This is why it's going to be a bit of a longer one today. So like I say, dip in, dip out, make sure you've got a brew. Uh, and let's have a look. Let me just find one that's sort of an easy one for you to see this one particularly had an awful lot of combined detail cut and speed cut uh, images on it so let's go for this one i know a lot of you don't like the mice if you don't like the mice just 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 hold your breath for a minute. On the vignettes, could Carnation produce single images so it would make increasing the size so much easier instead of a sheet of different images? You can always ask the question, Will Will. Um, I think whether they will or not, I don't know in as much as we get a lot of people, not complaining, but, but, but kind of irritated by the fact that the detail cuts have less images on each one and they would prefer to have more so uh, and, and they can't on the detail cut because it'll only read so many cut files but um it's something to consider i don't know if they will or not but i'll show you how to delete I can't, you can't delete a new printer unfortunately so it is a, a pain in that way when you've got your vignettes you can see in the corner here there's a little cutout, and it says sc 
you see that there? The SC means speed cut. You can also get DC, which means detail cut, and the two are very different. So the detail cut will give you all of those cut lines that you would get. Karen, you've got a cup of tea. I also have my brew right here, which is very strong black coffee, which I need. Uh, I may or may not have had just a smidge of vodka last night. So there has been a Barocca this morning. Um, so yes, anyway, right. I've got that on my mat and I've put it right in the corner, right in that corner. That's gonna make lining things up much easier for me. So that's what your mat looks like. Now, quick note on the mats. First of all, uh, there is no mat on the earth that will stay sticky for any length of time it loses its stick. It's the nature of the beast. When you first get it out, um, it's going to be really super sticky, too sticky. It's going to rip your paper. No way around it. It's just going to rip your paper. It doesn't matter whether you've got a low tack mat or a high tack mat. When you try and remove that paper, it's going to pull on those fibers and then you're going to have a world of pain trying to get that off. It is the most infuriating thing. So use a microfiber cloth or use your sleeve and just damp down on that mat just to get rid of some of that sticky and to get some of the fibers onto your mat. It will stop it clinging to the paper quite so much, which is going to help you out. However, that then won't stay sticky because you, when you use it, every time you use it, you lose some stick. So you can re-stick them. Now, you do that at your own risk. Um... But there are ways and means of re-sticking it. I use the Pin Flare Stencil Glue and I use the Carnation Craft. The Carnation Crafts do a sponge. It's in a round. It looks like a piece of cheese and it's little triangles. I say I use them. What I actually did was steal them off Hannah last week and haven't given them back. I don't know where they are now. I was using them last night. Uh... I'm wheeling myself around. So I use the Pin Flare Stencil Glue and Auntie Hannah's sponges. Sorry, Auntie Hannah. Uh, so I use that and I just re-stick my mat. Uh, now, if you haven't got anything like that, just use some washi tape. Stick it down. Right, I'm turning you around and I'm going to face you on this. Now, I'm going to need your help. If everybody can just help me out. Um, as I turn you, can you let me know that you can see the screen? You're also going to get a lovely flash of my dining room. I do apologise, but just bear with me a second. Let me spin you round and down. Can you see my screen? Everybody see that? And is it the right way round? Elbow grease from the loose is sticky. Yeah, that's a good idea. Is that a yes? Can we see the screen? You're like a magpie, Carl. I am like a, I am a magpie. I know, I'm known for it. Honestly, Dawn Wheeler, I'm her worst nightmare. Um, right, fabulous. Okay, this is the screen on your scan and cut. For those of you who've had it locked away in a box and you never bothered getting it out, absolutely understand where you're coming from. Totally get it. But let's get it out and play. Plug it in and you press the on button. You've got to press it for about, I don't know, 10 seconds. Otherwise, it doesn't come on and you think it's broken. So just make sure you keep it held. It'll come on and it'll come off. Now, I won't do your full scan and cut tutorial because you'll be here for ages. But it does have built-in patterns in it and you get them from here. If you just want to scan what's on your mat, you press that one and you can do a direct cut from that. And then if you've got a USB plugged in, which just goes at the side of the machine here, then you just press retrieve data. And I've got my USB in here. Now the scan and cup does hold some stuff itself. So you can, it's got some memory built in so you can actually save things to here, which is actually really, really useful. But when we're taking it straight from the USB, we just press this and it looks like a USB. So we're just gonna press that and you can see here, it comes up with content and papers. We want content because that's all the SVG files. So it says SVGs and vignettes. So all we do is then press that. Now I know some of you know all of this, but some of you don't. So please forgive me for going right back to basics, but I need to know that you are sort of, that you're comfortable with what we're doing. 
These are all your folders. Inside every folder, there are extra things. So for instance, if I go into Brilliance, you can see here, you've got the detail cut, detail cut two, you've got your mats, so you get mats for each one. And you've got your speed cut and your speed cut two, because you can either cut the outline, which is a speed cut, or you can cut every single detail line, which makes it more like a die, so you can sculpt it and mold it. Now I, if I'm cutting for myself and I'm making cards, I always use detail cuts, because I'd rather take the time. Um, but when I'm doing it on the shows, I always do a speed cut because we just need the outline. It's got to be quick. So that's what the difference is with those. If I open up, for instance, the detail cut, you can see here it comes up with all of that imagery there. It's got every little detail on it. Now, whether the speed cut looks the same as that when we first go into it, I, can you see all that details missing? So that's the difference. This is just doing an outline. The other is going to cut all of that line work that you see. So that's the difference. This is where we get into those kind of uni unique possibilities with the scan and cut. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to close that because I don't want to look at that one. I'm going to try and work out which mice I've got on my board because I can't remember which ones. So we'll go into SVGs and vignettes and we're just going to go down and see. Let's see if I can remember. I bet I can't. Um, the crafters now it's either the crafters the creators or the crew uh, da, 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 da. is it the crew or is it the creators i th i can't remember i should know these off by heart Is that the ones? Nope. No. Bad, bad mice. Um, we can go back up to a folder. So we can come back up. This is the way it works. This takes me up a folder. So it's very clever in that way. Um, and you can work out everything through these and we can just scroll through. And I really love that because we get all of this different sort of way of dealing with the uh, scan and cut. You can fl quickly flip through. Can you see all the mice now? We've gone third time lucky. Uh, let's go up one. Can you see how it retrieves all of that data? And we just go through. Which one have I done? Oh, I'm going to forget now. Was it the crafters? This is why I'm hopeless at remembering anything. Is that the one? He's got a tape measure. I don't have a tape measure. Right, we've done the crafters. We've done the crew. Let's go. So it's got to be this one. Is it? This is why mice are always pesky. There we go. So this is the one I've got on my mat here. So when you see it here, I could delete it if I wanted to from there. Please remember when you delete, you don't delete it from the USB, you're only deleting it off your screen. That was a panic I had when I first started. You can see them all here. And when I press that, there's a little red bounding box that comes round, which I can delete if I want to get rid of some of the mice. But if I'm just wanting to cut the whole thing, and that's what we're gonna go with to start with so you can see how it works, what we do is we press OK, first of all. And that's just gonna leave that here. Now I've gotta scan my image in because otherwise I don't know whether it's gonna cut at the same point. So what we do is we go to edit, right? And actually, first of all, can you see the oven door? There's an oven door in the middle. Press that, scan the mat. Let's scan the mat first and then I know that that's working. So it says your mat's not loaded. You go to your chessboard. There's a little chessboard here, click it. Can you see, I don't know if you can see or not, but my mat is just going in and out. You don't really need to see the mat, but I'll put it down. I'd rather you saw the screen, to be honest. But we then press start. What that does is feed my mat through. As it feeds through, the scanning bed inside here is taking a full photograph of that image on my mat. It spits it out again, and that will show on my screen. So it's just a photo. It's just a scan that you would get in an office. It's the same thing, normal scanner that you might have on your printer. And you can see here in full colour that vignette. Now, I can tell you already that that is not where it should be, but it's hard to see, right? And I'm going to struggle with that because uh, I, I, it's too difficult to see it. So I'm going to go to edit 
And when I do, a little magnifying glass appears at the top here. I'm going to click that magnifying glass and I'm going to click it another one down here. And that's going to take me up to 400 percent. And that's going to take me right into that corner. Can you see? So this is where that red bounding box becomes important because I need to line that up to the black lines. So if I can just move that down one and then down another that should get me right there on that line matching. And then if I move it across and across again, maybe one more, that's got me absolute. Can you see? So my red bounding box is now matching the black box that goes around. Which USB is the mice on? So this is the For The Occasion USB, uh, which has got crafty little things. And it's also got brain, 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 bundles of joy and Ex Equinox blooms on it. So it's got the three full collections on there. There's tons of stuff on here. Now, once I've got to the point where that is all lined up completely, the machine then knows that it's in the right place. It's gonna cut my mice exactly in the right place. So when I press OK, I can see here that it's there. When I press OK again and OK again, can you see the image, the scanned image disappears, but I've still got those cut lines for my mice. And what I would do then is press please select and I'm gonna cut it. Now, if you've got pens in your scan and cut, you could foil it. Um, you could do all kinds of stuff on there because the scanning cuts will take them. Uh, but obviously we're just using it for the cutting purposes. So I'm gonna press cut. And then I would have the choice here to press start and it will start cutting those mice. I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna take too long. It'll say there already that it's four minutes for it to cut those. And that's a little bit too long just for the demo purposes. Uh, it would help if Carnation would put the name of the vignette on the bottom of the page when you print so you know exactly which picture matches which file when you go to look for it to cut. Absolutely, I will say in order to bypass that myself, if it helps you, the first thing I ever do with my USB is put it into my computer and I transfer all the files that are on the USB onto my computer. And I just drag and drop. So I select all and I drag it onto my desktop into a new folder. And then my USB is kept just for my machine. That means when I then open that folder on my computer, I can actually see all the images with the name and I can match it up on my scan and cut. That might help you in the future when you're doing that. It's just a, a, a tip and a trick because I can't remember the names of everything. I'm hopeless. Um, so that just makes things slightly easier. So that's how you cut. That's a basic, that is the most basic demonstration I can give you. That's how we line it up. That's how we get it going. So I hope that made sense to everybody. It's your starting point. And it's where we start to make use of this scan and cut and suddenly it becomes something else. Now we talked, didn't we, about, um, you know, if you've used your printer and you have um, sort of made something uh, like 150 percent um, or you have increased it by however many pixels. Now, for older scan and cuts, you don't get the percent button on it, but you can increase it by a certain amount of pixels and you can match that up on here as well. Um, so we're going to go back into retrieve data here and I'm going to show you how to resize. Now I'll be doing it on percentages, but it works the same whichever way you're doing it. So we're going to press on content again. We ignore papers when it's in your machine because papers are your back in papers that you can print out. You don't need them on here. They wouldn't work on here anyway. So we're going to go to SVGs and vignettes and we'll choose something. We'll go for a welcome brew because we'll be using this later anyway. I'm gonna go for speed cut because I'm just gonna quickly show you, but it would be the same for detail cut as well. You can see here, I've got two cups. I've got the teapot and I've got what is supposed to be, I don't know what they called it. Is it a tea urn or something? Uh, I say it's a biscuit tin and uh, I'm, I can do that. It's still got my scanner on there, which is hopeless. Just bear with me. And let me just go home and make sure I can delete all of that. And then I will unload my mat just for the sake. Let's see if that works. If not, we turn it off and turn it on again. Um, let's see if it'll do it this way. So I don't want my scan on there. And is that what somebody was asking at the beginning? It could be. 
Let's see if you can get rid of it. There you go, let's see. So that's got rid of it. So you just press your home button, um, theoretically, and unload your mat if it's already just scanned because it doesn't think you've finished with what you were doing. So you can see here, I've got the, the, the two biscuits, the teapots and etc. Now, if I only wanted to enlarge the teapot, for instance, what I'm going to do is select that bounding box. Now, we're going out of normal territory when we do this. Um, and um, just bear with me. Sorry, Judy, I wasn't meaning to ignore you. Probably a really dumb question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Uh, never use carnation craft USBs before. Can you use them on a laptop computer to print vignettes and backing papers? Yes, you can. And you get loads in there. Um, <laughs> if I was straight colour, I would marry you. But at the moment, I only have eyes for Nick. Don't we all, Will Will? Don't we all? Poor Nick. Um, so we've got all of this here. Um... USB. Just to just to say, Judy. For instance, for example, on this particular USB, you actually get two hundred and twenty-eight backing papers. It's a massive whacking pack of backing papers on there, and you also get all the vignettes as well. Um, and so they are the ones that you need on your computer because you can't actually use this obviously to print anything off. You've got to get those onto your computer. So I've got this bounding box here. If I was to just put my um, mat on here and load it, I could line it up like we did before, but I don't want to. I want to get rid of a lot of that. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is go to edit. I've got my bounding box, that red bounding box, and I'm going to press delete, and it's going to delete my bounding box. It doesn't select the data. It just deletes my bounding box. Does that make sense? So uh, what I'm going to do, is this model a good starter machine? Uh, Pam, I would say to you it's an amazing starter machine. However, there are cheaper models. And if you were going for a starter machine, I would go for the 900. Uh, I know that uh, Create and Craft often have it cheap. Uh, I would go and see if they've got a deal on it. Um, this one's a bit more expensive because it's got a bigger screen, but it depends what your budget is to, uh, you know, go go to them on them. But they're such good machines. Once I've got rid of that bounding box, I now need to get rid of some of those images. Now, I can press each one individually and press delete, but that's a lot of messing about and I don't like doing that. So I'm going to press select all. That's going to select everything and I'm going to get rid of of the ones I don't want. So I'm gonna press okay on here. And then I'm gonna select, I want to keep the teapot and I only want to keep one teapot. So I'm just gonna deselect if it'll let me do it. It never lets me do it when I want to, hold on. Look, see, now it's had a lag. Oh, the joy of technology, there. Okay, right, so now that I've deselected one teapot, I can get rid of all of those together. Just saves me a bit of time by pressing delete and pressing OK. And there's my teapot. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go to object, edit, and I'm going to turn it round. So we've got a rotate button here. Now the teapot's at a funny angle. So if I turn it 90 degrees, it's still not straight. So I'm then going to go 10, 10, 10, and 10, and that should sit me about right. So I'm going to press OK. Now I want to make it bigger. So if I've printed at 100% or 200%, for instance, if I put that into the middle of my mat and I resize, now you've got to think of it as if you're dragging it out. So this is your dragging out tool. You can see it at the top with draggy tool. And we're going to press that. And it says, my height is 60 millimeters and my width is 83 millimeters. If I was printing off, I could use those measurements on my printer to make them bigger. But if I've done it via percent, there's a percent button on this 1200. I can press that and I can say, right, I know I did it to 200% so I can increase it. And the aspect ratio is locked. So it'll increase it by height and it will increase it by width at the same time. If I didn't want the aspect ratio to be locked, I could unlock it using this button at the bottom, just next to the percent button there. And so I could just make it taller, but keep it the width the same size. I hope that makes sense. Um, I started with this machine. Yeah, Joe, it's a great one. 
Um, great starter. I think the 1200. Honestly, if it was me and I had the money, I'd go for the 1200. It's got a bigger screen. And it's just, I don't know, there's something lovely about it. Um, I have gone from, so the CM, so the CM900 was given to me. I then bought the SDX900, which I keep in Yorkshire. And then I've got the 1200 here. Uh, so, and I bought this one as well. So I am a massive fan of the scan and cuts. So, um, you know, I really love them. So that's how we increase the size. So then when you've got, um, your vignette and it's doubled up, obviously what you're going to do is scan that in. If it was still on its, um, funny angle, which it would be when you printed, you would have just missed out the steps where you turn it and rotate it. Um, and, and that's all you'd need to do. So it would probably print out something like that. And then you would just go in and you'd line it up on top. And the way that you do that is once you've scanned it in, you just kind of drag this over the top. But remember to use those percentage buttons so that you can see it more clearly, not percentage, sorry, the magnifying glass. And then you'll really get those lines sort of added up together. What Carnation do, which is brilliant, is um, they always give you a thick bleed line. So if I just show you the mice here, can you see how they are kind of all fuzzy, wuzzy around the edge, like on his feet here? That's the bleed line. So it means that if you're not 100% accurate, it's still probably going to cut it, it with a perfect line. So you'll still see it all perfectly. So that's how we enlarge. It's super important to know how to do that because not all, you know, uh, of, of us want to cut everything the same size. And we also get the really joyful thing of being able to make those card shapes bigger that we get on them as well. So things like um, you get on here, there's the like curved card shape on here. You can make that bigger or smaller. So there's really great options on a scan and cut or on a cutting machine. And that's why I love them so much. One of the big questions that was asked, like I say, was how do we put something together like this? And I think that's important. So let's have a look first of all at that. So I'm going to do a bit of welding and then we're going to look at some Elevate and I'm going to show you how to use Elevate. So let's look at welding first. I'm going to go home and I'm going to get rid of all of that detail. Welding is really important because we can do so much with it. And the great thing about Carnation Crafts USBs is that they give us the mats in order for us to be able to make the card different uh, card uh, bases. Sorry. What's the difference between the 900 and the 1200? 900 is a smaller screen and it's got a few less patterns inbuilt into it. Um, and the, you know, the 1200 is obviously much bigger. But to be honest, other than that, not a huge amount of difference. Uh, so it depends. Um, but they're just such great things to have. I'm going to go into retrieve data. We're going to go back to that welcome brew. It's the first one on your USB for anyone who wants to know. Go to content. All your folders come up under SVGs and vignettes. A welcome brew. There it is. There's your first one. And you can see we've got detail cut, speed cut, mats. Now, if you wanted to make this bigger, you would the first thing you would do is increase the size. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to um, sort of make it the size that it is but we'll, we'll see it as we progress. But you can just make it bigger. You've seen how to do that. Refer back to that. So what I'm going to do is go into edit and I'm going to select all of those. Um, that's got them all there. And I'm going to deselect the ones I want to keep. So I want to keep, oh, good Lord, the joy of having finger covers on. That one, that one, and that one. Now, the problem when you've got really fat fingers and you've got finger covers on is that you can't do anything no nope. okay i'm going to do it individually because i'm going to be here all day that's how you would normally do it i can't because i've got fat fingers i've got finger covers on and uh yeah life's a joy at the minute so i want to keep one cup one biscuit barrel as such uh, Pretty sure it's not a biscuit barrel, but I'm still sticking with it. Now you can see it's gone onto a teapot. I want to keep that teapot. I'm going to have to somehow 
You do get a, a what's it with these, by the way. Um, I've just lost mine. Um, you're all helping each other, which is... Re have you lost your little stick? Yes, Lynn McLeod, I have lost my little stick. Um, I think it got lost in the studio. So anyway, I've just, it shows you how to delete all of those individual things. The auto blade is incredibly useful on these. So if you go to a CM range, you won't get an auto blade, which means you have to work out your sizings yourself. And that is incredibly frustrating. The auto blade, which are your SDX machines, they all have that auto. So what it does, it tests the depth of your mat, then it tests the depth of what you're cutting and it knows the difference which is super clever and it will uh, cut up to three millimeters thick so we can go in with gray board so if you think of a mouse for instance and you cut that you can actually do that in gray board stylus yeah i've lost my stylus i don't know where it is uh, it could be absolutely anywhere oh look my pens i haven't even opened my pens in here so it's like a little tour i've got i've got my whizzy stick thingy you know, the whole scoop. The other thing's just gone missing. You do get it with it when it comes. So I've got all of these three here. Now we want to weld it into this card shape. So just to show you this card shape again, she says, we've got the teapot, we've got the tea caddy behind, and we've got the cup of tea in front. I'm going to put that in front of me so I can see what I'm looking at. So the first thing I want to do is move that out of my way to start off with. So I'm gonna take that teapot, remember how we had to rotate it because it was the wrong way round. Trees, you're saying you're confused. What are you confused by? Um, Suzanne, I love my SDX, I find it brilliant. They're so easy to use. So we've got the teapot, we've deleted all the other pieces from this page. We've got the teapot here. We're gonna to go to object edit, I need to turn it. Remember how we turn it, there's a little button here with an arrow and it says turn it round. Um, so I'm just gonna use that and then I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees and then I'm gonna use my 10 just to get it so it's straight because for the card base, I want it to be absolutely straight. So my teapot is now in place, ready to go. And remember, these are my mats that I'm using. It's not the actual detail cut or anything else. It's those mats. Um, can you scan the mats from the dies into the scan and cut and then weld them? Do you know, I don't know. I've never tried... Do what I do. Buy a new one when you lost your old one. Lo and behold, you'll find the, the old one. I know, right? Too right, Louise. That's exactly what would happen. Use a clean glue applicator. That's a good idea. Right, so my teapot's straight. Now, the next thing that I need to do is have a, my tea caddy. And that's obviously sitting behind. But it doesn't matter because these are just my mats and layers. So it doesn't matter where that tea caddy actually sits. So again, I need to rotate it. So I'm going to go 90 degrees and I'm going to sit it around about there. So it's just next to my teapot. It doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter that it's in front because actually it's not going to make a difference to the card. The teapot's actually the, let me explain. What I'm making here is the card base. Once, so you can see here, there isn't a teapot spout on that because it cuts it as one piece. It's actually the vignettes that are gonna give me that teapot spout because I'm gonna put that on top of my card base. So we're just making the card base at this point. So there's my tea caddy, which is sitting there. Then I've got my teacup. Again, we need to rotate. This time I think we need to rotate that way, I think. And I'm just gonna put this up here and I'm gonna place it in front of that biscuit barrel. So you can see I've got all three sitting on top of each other now. Now I need to weld them. And in order to do that, I have to group them because otherwise it's not going it hasn't got anything to weld to. It has to have something to weld to. So I'm gonna go into this here and I'm gonna press this one again for grouping. And it's selected all three of them at once, which is fantastic. I'm gonna go to okay. And I'm going to go to object edit again. When we want to weld, and just bear in mind, not everything does weld. So just be aware from that. Uh, and I'm going to press my drunken Cluedo head. 
Can you see my drunk Cluedo head just here? He fell over because he was a little bit tipsy. We're going to press him. So your drunken Cluedo head will weld. It says, okay to weld pattern outline. It's irreversible. That doesn't mean it's irreversible on your USB. It means in this particular instance, once you've done it, you can't undo it. Um, so I'm going to press okay. Then I'm going to press okay again. And now I've got a full matte and layer of all of those. Now, if I want to make that a card base, I can either cut it twice and uh, score it. But to be honest, there's an easier way of doing it or a better way, I think, of doing it. So what I'm going to do while it's all still selected, I'm going to go to object edit and I'm going to use this plus button because I need two, one for the back, one for the front, my card base. And I'm going to select two and I'm going to press OK. So I've got two identical objects here. Can you see? Absolutely identical. Now I'm only going to keep that one selected. I don't want to, I'm not going to interfere with the bottom one. What I need to do is rotate that fully. It needs to be upside down as the card turns over. So I'm going to go into my tool here and I'm going to rotate and I'm going to rotate. So now they are uh, uh, you know, as such, I've got two in the right direction, but I need to flip it. So this one here with the two arrows is basically a mirror. And if you watch this, when I press this button, it's going to reflect straight away. Now it's exact. OK, so now I know that I'm where I need to be. I can pull that down a little bit. What I need to do before I go any further is make sure they're aligned so that when it closes, they're in exactly the same place. So I'm going to go to OK. And I'm going to press this button again to group and I'm going to select both of them. Press OK. Go back to object edit. This is all you need to know. It's just object edit, really. And you can see here is your alignment button. Just says basically you've got two shapes and a line at the side. That's how we know that they're aligned. So I'm going to press that and I'm going to select the top one. Just means they align to the left. So that's almost done. All I need to do now is make sure that those two are welded. So I'm going to press my drunken Cluedo head. And it'll say, is it OK? It's irreversible. You can't go back. Once you've done it, you've done it. So I'm going to press OK. And that's it. It's welded it. So OK, OK. And now I can cut that. And that gives me a perfect card base. And what that looks like, because I totally blue peated it, is one I made earlier, is that. So all I would do is use a scoring tool rather than my paws, but put them together, put that on top. That's my, that's my tea caddy or my biscuit tin, whichever way you like. And then I would cut my vignettes, which we'll do in a, a second. And I would just place them on top of each other. So I'd have my teapot here, my biscuit urn behind if I wanted to, and my cup in front. And that's how you make your perfect bespoke card shapes. That's the same when we're doing text. It's the same as anything else. It all works the same. Isn't that so clever? And that's all of your card bases. So suddenly we go from when you're cutting a die, having to use, say, for instance, a rectangle or a circle card shape, which in, in, you know, in and of itself is beautiful. But now we can make bespoke ones. So imagine somebody's name, all of those things that we can start to bring in, because in the scan and cut itself, if I go home on here and I press OK and I go into pattern, and this is nothing to do with carnation. This is actually what comes on this machine. I've got this here, which are my fonts. So I can add in letters. So if I wanted to, I could have made that with a name on the bottom. Using exactly the same principle, I'd just be adding in letters as well. And when we're doing it with fonts, you have to do individual letters. Uh, so you would put in, say like, I, I'm not going to write a full letter, but if I was to put in C, I would press OK, it would come up there and I would set it and it'd be on my map. Then I would have to add in a new one. So we've got an add button here. Can you see, I'm, have I lowered you down? It's because I moved my machine, didn't I? There you go. If I press add, I can then go back in and I can go back to pattern and I can go back to my font and I can select it again and then I can add another letter. 
and I can say OK and set. And now I've got another letter. And then in the same way that I did before, I would play with them. I would put them on top of each other and I would weld them together. And I could make a card shape out of somebody's name and I could add it to those carnation vignettes as well. So everything works together. So I hope that makes sense. Right, let's go home. OK, right. I'm just going to turn you around. Hi. Hi, it's nice to see you all. <coughs> I just can have a mouthful of brew. I'm on a wonky angle. Just one second. Just a minute. Right, I hope all that made sense. Right, I've got my um, teapots here. And what I'm going to do is show you elevate. Did that make sense, Joanne? Um... And that's the baby card too. Yeah, so that's what I just wanted to say is just that those letters work in exactly the same way. So it's just a case of playing. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of my favourite thing in the world, which is Elevate. Now, when you're at home, I strongly advise you not to be wearing finger protectors when you do this. But I'm going to have to lower you down. Let's see if I can get you to see where you are. There you go. Okay, so the Elevate sheet is here, I've just got one, and here is my vignette. So the way we do this is to peel back the top sheet of your Elevate. And the way I do it is I always just sort of score it, but I don't normally have finger protectors on, so I can usually do a better job. Then the way I work it, excuse my big face coming into shot, but I just get it corner and corner and then I lay it until I've got that point there and then I can pull the rest. Now I'll be totally honest with you I'm being a little bit glib here because if I was actually doing this for myself I don't like wasting Elevate so I would have cut that and I would have kept that piece. What I will say to you about Elevate is once this is all cut and I've got it sitting there I would be able to um, take all the little bits that are left and I, and I use them as foam pads so I just cut it up and use it the way I want to. Um, so it's really up to you how you want to do. Um, so all we then do you keep the back sticky on don't take that off and stick it to your mat you'll have a hell of a job getting it off so just leave it where it is we need that yellow base on here and all you're going to do is stick it now i don't know if my mat is going to be sticky enough to take this so we'll see what happens but you do need it to have enough stick if you're unsure and you don't think it's going to stick because you don't want to waste elevate then uh, i would washi tape that if it was me, but for the sake of this demo, let's wing it. So what we're gonna do, now that I've got that stuck down, is I'm gonna turn you around and we'll take you back to my scan and cut. I'm not gonna be able to get everything all in at once, but it's the same principle. Let me just bring you closer. And we're going to have that stuck to the mat. We're just gonna press load the mat. Now, this is the difference between a CM machine and an SDX, just to give you a clue. This is thick. This is, you know, I've just cut paper and now I'm cutting something that is really, really thick. So what I need to do is make sure the blade knows that. I don't have to do that with the, the SDX machine. It does it. It knows it. Uh, so it, it's sort of easier. It chewed up my 170 Pro print paper trees you do mean this scan and cut chewed up your pro print paper if it did it's something to do with your mat not being sticky enough or being too sticky one or the other that's something we all have to just kind of get to grips with is how sticky our mat is i it's sometimes beyond me as well but it you know we kind of get a feel for it the more we use it so we're going in here we're going to go to um content SVGs and vignettes, and I'm going to go to a welcome brew. Now I can cut this direct now. I don't need to mess about, and I'm just gonna go to a speed cut on it. 
and I'm going to press OK. And we're going to do exactly what we said, which is line it up as we did before. So the first thing I'm going to do is scan my image. And so that's the oven door. Remember, we press our oven door and that oven door is scanning the image. So it takes in the mat with that elevate on top of it. Now, there is a chance that it'll say my scanning lever is in the wrong position because this is thicker than the paper I was cutting. But it does come up and it tells you that and your scanning lever is just on the side, this side of your scanning cut and you just lift the lever up if you need to. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to my magnifying glass. Remember then, press it again. Let's get those corners exact. So can you see that top line is just slightly off the black line? So I'm just using my arrows down, down again, and we'll just go across and across again. And that's got me pretty much spot on, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna press okay. I'm gonna press okay, I'm gonna press okay. So now it takes away my scan because all it needs to know is, is this what I'm cutting? Now, realistically, I don't need to cut all of them, but we're going to do it just for the sake of the demo because I do want you to see it cutting. Watch it go wrong because that's just the joy of life. It says it's going to take two minutes. I can tell you categorically that will change because it knows it's a thicker material. So it's going to take longer. So cut in two minutes. Auto blade comes in and it tests the map. Then it lifts and it tests the paper that it's cutting this will change it'll it's calibrating and it's there you go four minutes it sits there and it goes hang on i'm gonna need to cut around this more than once because it's a thicker material so it changes the time that it takes to cut it and i think that is just very clever and you can see it working there it's cutting everything out as it goes so super, super easy, super, super clever. And I'm going to leave that and just let it do its thing. Sorry about my big hand in the way there. Um, so you're using the SDX 900 trees. I used it once and welded itself to my die cutting plates. Um, sticky on your mat, it'd be worth lowering your speed and trying to test cut. If it's an SDX, it's doing its own thing. Um, It'll just be the stickiness of your mat. It, it's not to do with the paper, it's just the stickiness of the mat, I'm afraid. Um, and it's just about kind of getting to grips with that. Unfortunately, that's the same with all cutting machines. They've got different sticky. Uh, if you increase the size before welding, what do you increase by the same figure on printer when printing? So again, that same thing. So when you print it, you decide your size when you're printing it. Um, so, You've got to print at, you know, if you decide that you want to print it at 150%, you, you're going to set that in the printer before you ever set it on your scan and cut, and then it would be the same. You just mirror that. Um, you don't have this kind of printer. No wonder I have issues. I like how it's quieter than... It's so quiet. It is so quiet. I love my scan and cut. Um, you know, like I say, I'm a big fan of die cutting too, I just, they're, but they're so different. It's not the same kind of crafting. Um, and, you know, I always get excited when there's a new USB because to me, it, it's that thing of, I'm gonna suddenly have so many more options than I would have just with the dies. So I find it really fascinating to use the USBs um, and I get something completely different out of it. And I think that's a really lovely thing to have. Um, but we all, you know, have our own ways of doing things. It's just, you know, the joy of playing. Now, I'm just looking because, pretty sure, oh, there it is. We're going to need this card base, right? Just forgive me while I just have a slurp of coffee. Coffee is always in the Right, so we're on a minute left. It's nearly done. Carnation Crafts. If you go into the Carnation Crafts headquarters, which you're not allowed, I'm afraid. I don't think they like me going in there either, if there's any consolation. But when you go in, they've got a massive logo uh, that says Carnation Crafts. Um, it's the Carnation Crafts logo in this gorgeous, really thick, beautiful lettering. And it's all done on Elevate. It's so clever. So they used the Scan and Cut and they used Elevate and they made their logo for their office out of it. 
How clever is that? That's how much I love the scanning curtain and Elevate as well, because I think it's just incredible. So the reason that I love Elevate so much, well, this is just cut in. It's not just the fact that it's stickers. The, the four year old in me who always wanted stickers and my parents never had money, so we didn't have things like stickers. Um, so I love it because of that. But actually, as a tool, I know that I can get a lot more of my craft in from it because if I'm making a box, I can I can put it on there. But also as, as an artist, I'm somebody who very much likes to sculpt paper. And this lets me do that and continue to sculpt because it's moldable, that foam is moldable. I can take a ball tool and I can use it still on there. So it's super, super useful. The sheet that you took off, keep it. So we don't throw those carrier sheets away because we can stick our stickers to them once they are done because it's obviously uh, shiny on that side. So you can stick them to them and you can keep using them. Um, sorry about being stupid. Can you explain welding larger and printing, please? Of course I can. Let this cut. I'll do a, I'll make it into a card uh, using the elevate and then I'll go through how we do that with the welding so you can see how to do that okay it is that is that okay um just to make it easier for you remember when we're making it larger um you're going to do all of those shapes individually so the card base when we're welding that that would go up to an increased size so i would increase my card base to 150 if, it, if my vignettes were at 150 then each vignette you print individually, obviously, and you cut individually, and uh, you do each of those at 150%, and they go on separately. So like these ones that I'm cutting now are my vignettes. So it's just getting the difference between them. But your card base, so I could have made that 150%, and then I could cut out each vignette, the teapot, the tea urn, oh, the tea caddy, and the um, cup each one of those individually at 150, and that would then fit on my 150% card base. Uh, so I hope that kind of clears that up. Um, so you can do it when it's welded, you can do it before. Each individual shape is 150, or you can weld them all and then make it 150%. It's up to you. Hi Carla and Crafty friends, I've just got in from work, I'm sat with my coffee and cookies are watching now. Yay for coffee. Do you know, I had some ginger nuts this morning, not gonna lie, one ginger nut drank the whole of my coffee and then exploded into the bottom of my coffee. So I was just left with chum, just chum. Alison, did that make sense? So you've got, so like literally once I'd welded all three of those, I can then go back in with those three welded shapes and just increase the size of that to 150. That's gonna be easier than doing each one individually. But the vignettes that I'm cutting, because I'd have the teapot at a bigger size, I'd have to increase that and cut that separately. You wouldn't weld your vignettes together. You would cut them separately and then you add on. Um, so that's how that works. So this is cut here. So I'm just gonna move my SDX out of the way and I'm gonna bring you down. Actually, well, that sounds horrible. I'm not gonna bring you down, but you know what I mean. And so I've got it sitting on here. Now, when I lift these, you can see it takes my outside so things like this where you've got your outside line don't throw that away that's still valuable foam uh, valuable sticky foam cut those into little foam pans use them for instance uh, your card shapes and stuff like that so just you know keep using that you don't need to um, get rid of those pieces and then basically what I can do is remove this from here so I've got this, again, foam pads, perfect for use. You can see I've got all my little, stuff. are they cute? I've got all my little, little stickies, all there. So what I can then do, just as an example here, is take, I'm not so easy with these finger covers on, take the teapot, I'm gonna need some tweezers, me thinks, hold on. I keep sticking to everything which is not the most awesome fun. So I can take the teapot. Now, which way was this round? Let's make sure I get it right. Oh, teapot last. So we go in with the D caddy first for that same card. And so you could use pin flow if you weren't using elevate, obviously, but we just get that 
and stick it down in the right place when you haven't got finger covers on, which I have. Remember, your card base is your mat and layer, so you want to go in with a gap. I can't do it with these finger covers on, so just bear with me, you get the gist, that's the main thing. Then I'm gonna go in with my tea cup, which sits just here. Now this is where I would be using pin flare because of my finger covers, but you get the gist and that's the most important. And then I go in with my tea pot, like so. And then I would add in a mouse and a little, so you've got a mini and a big, same thing. Can you see? It's a, uh, oh God, I'm going the right, hey, oh. Useless for camera angles. Can you see we've got exactly the same card pretty much? It's just that one's much bigger and that's how we lay it out and it's just making it uh, that difference. So you can see on Janine's here, hers was welded. That tea, uh, the, the tea urn, the tea caddy on Janine's, you can see here, it's quite near to that teapot lid there whereas mine has a bigger gap between so basically it's just a case of when you're welding you just move that further near to the teapot that that makes sense in my head hopefully it does with yours too when you are taking your elevate pieces off here and you've retained that carrier sheet what you can do which is really really useful and it's what I do with all of mine because it's cut so many extras on there that I'm not going to be using just on here. I take the backing off the sticker and I place it on that carrier sheet and I will do that with all of these pieces that I've got here and then I will keep that, keep that flat in a folder and then I've always got them to go to when I want to make cards so I'd have them all placed on here and I can go back at any time and I could do that. Could Carnation in the future do workshops for people new to the scan and cut, e.g. like Create and Craft Weekends? I'm sure it's something we could do. It would certainly be uh, done with the Carnation Crafts USBs, obviously, um, but if you want that, I'm sure I can talk to Mark and see if he would let me do that. Um, it's generally me that, do, that does the scan and cut shows because I'm the lunatic that loves it so much. Um, so, yes, that's that's kind of where it goes from there. It's so easy to use and just, you know, it's a lot of fun. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's doing something, I've said this so many times, but as somebody who loves to craft and somebody who loves to make art and, you know, I like my own freedom and I like to choose what I'm gonna do. I don't want people telling me how to make a specific card and that's why I love Carnation anyway because there's so many ways to use their dies but then when I come on and I've got the SVG I've now got a thousand other things that I can do it, it their collection suddenly becomes my collection I get to do what I want to do with it that's so important I think um Will I be doing the Dynamics card demo at some point? Yes, I did kind of do it at the beginning just to show you how to put it together. Um, if you would like a full demo on how to make a full crafty little things card, uh, I will have a look and see if I can factor that in. Um, what I'm about to actually go live as well in the Carnation Crafters group, um, but only for two minutes. Uh, but uh, that also will be helpful for you when I go in there as well. So there's information in there that you can all use. Um, Jane, thank you, Carla. This has been the best tutorial I've seen. Really enjoyed it. Hope your fingers get better so So do I. Um, You'd love a beginner's course to encourage and inspire beginner's level. Yeah, you know, and do you know what, Olwyn? I wish somebody had taken the time at the beginning to say to me, this is how you turn it on. Because we don't all know. Because it's not obvious. It's terrifying. When you take a scan and cut out the box, it's terrifying. Um... So it's, it's about getting those beginning bits together. It's about somebody sitting with you and going, this is how you weld. And hopefully that's given you some information today. Um, and, you know, it's, 
it's a really lovely thing to sit with you and have questions and be able to answer them and you know to the best of my ability and for be able you know to be able to say if you can follow this and you can weld something your world for crafting just opened up massively you've just blown that right open it's the same principle when you're adding letters as it is for adding vignettes it's exactly the same keep watching the video the bits over and again and it will it will start to fall in and it will make sense the biggest thing i can tell you about the scan and cut more than anything else take it out and play with it just put something on your mat put it in just put a blank piece of paper on your mat go to patterns and select a circle and cut it because once you realize that you're in charge of it and it's not in charge of you you will just feel a lot more empowered and a lot more creative um it's just a really lovely way of crafting. I really hope this brought something to you and I hope it was valuable. I've really enjoyed your company and I'm so grateful that you have sat with me. Um, and I hope you're all really well. Um, and hopefully I will speak to you all soon, but I'll see you in the group in about two minutes because I'm just gonna nip over there and tell you all something. So I'll speak to you really, really soon. Thank you and I'll see you soon. Bye.